An East London school says it may be forced to close its gates and move teaching online after receiving a series of anonymous arson and bomb threats. Barclay Primary School in Leighton has been accused of Islamophobia after a decision by teachers to ask children to stop wearing items showing political allegiance, including pro-Palestinian badges. Now, the school was also forced to shut before Christmas after a TikTok video alleging uh, that a pupil was being bullied by teachers for being Palestinian, went viral, angry protesters gathered outside with staff claiming to suffer harassment and intimidation. The latest escalation comes after Catherine Burbel Singh's Michaela Community School in North London was forced to close for Christmas early when hoax claims suggested that bombs had been placed on the premises. Now, the school had imposed a prayer ban shortly beforehand, which is now the subject of a High Court challenge brought by one of its pupils who claims it's aimed at Muslim children. It's now emerged that tens of thousands of pounds of public money is being used to fund the battle through civil legal aid. Uh, this, there's quite a lot um, to discuss here. I mean, for a start off, I mean, for goodness sake, when are we going to start actually uh, kind of, you know, finding out these people who, who did these arson and bomb threats and actually um, mm. taking them to court for a start off? Secondly, um, you know, you, you see that the, the quote from uh, Catherine Burble Singh, who says, uh, defending the stance at the, at the school, uh, which is actually one of the best performing mm. schools in England. Mm. And she says, um, uh, uh, all races, children of all races and religions buy into something bigger than themselves, our country. And the whole thing is she's saying that, 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 that you know, that, that it's become disruptive, that it's become, it's gone from a small sort of number of people to suddenly more and more children saying that they're going to do it. There's bullying going on, allegedly, about sort of, you know, people who, who weren't doing it, who are now you know, going to do this, uh, who are praying, who are being, who, who who she feels are being forced to wear headscarves and various other things that they weren't doing, who are being forced to lead choirs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it seems to me that we're back to two things. One is one is that it's sort of to do with bullying, and the other is, which is, we seem to have stopped actually having discussions anymore. We take our positions and we merely shout at each other, we're right, no, we're right, and there seems to be no other thing. When I was growing up, I mean, we had parent-teachers associations, and everybody discussed things at those, mm. so you'd think that somebody somewhere would say, can we have a discussion and can we come to some kind of compromise here? It's very difficult, though, when the parents are of one opinion and the school <laughs> is of another opinion, and and that seems to be what's happened, certainly in the Barclay Primary School, where you know there were these huge protests, and it all started with this eight. I mean, this is a primary school. That's the other mm. thing that's so ridiculous. It, was, it all started with a little eight-year-old boy whose mother was from Gaza, who on Children in Need Day went in with a Palestinian sticker because he <clears> wanted to talk about the children in Gaza who were dying. Now, obviously. That's a much bigger political issue. But to an eight year old, it's quite simple and straightforward. And then it grew and grew and grew until you had these protests and, as Penny said, um, these discussions. And then you've got the school versus the parents. And it should always try to be the school with, with the parents. parents. Now, I don't know what the answer there is. And it's the same with the Michaela school. But also, yeah. can we just get back to basics that schools are about educating children? You know, there's a lot of um, disruption of their day to day education going on here, especially at Barclay, but at other schools. Mm. I think British schools actually do a really good job of embracing diversity and mm. equality and inclusion. That they talk about, that they, they celebrate, I mean, I, my son's nursery, they celebrate all the different festivals, they make sure that they talk about lots of different cultures, they, they take them off to Chinese restaurants and different, <laughs> different cuisines and all of that. I think, compared to a few decades ago when I was at school, you know, when there wasn't mm. much openness, yeah. there wasn't much talk of kind mm. of in inclusiveness. I think we have very multi-racial, multi-inclusive, multicultural schools. That is true, but the problem we have here is that, and the same, my son's nursery is the same, but there's no flags allowed, there's no religious symbols mm. allowed, there's Muslims, and that's right. there's Jewish people, there's Christians, mm. there's atheists, and that's how it should be, but those are the rules of the nursery. What, they, what we won't have, though, is people saying, oh, you can wear the Ukrainian flag in today and you can put the blue and yellow on your mm. cheek mm. to celebrate that. You can't say you can't have Palestinian flags, but you can have Ukrainian flags, no, and that's what we're seeing in some right. There needs to be some consistency in it. I mean, there are two issues. I think that the prayer thing is a bigger, more long-running thing. But, I, you know, when it comes down to people protesting outside of primary school, yeah. what, what, I don't know what gets into Ooh. people's heads when they think that that is an appropriate way to act. Well, you, schools are about teaching and learning, yeah. but you can only do both of those things. I say this as somebody who used to be a teacher. If the kids 
feel safe. It's about removing distractions yeah. um, and fear. And there are so, certain cultural backgrounds that I'm not sure should be in secondary schools and definitely shouldn't be and in primary Jeff, schools. Jeff, as somebody who, who used to, to teach, I mean, I just wonder whether this um, court case that the Michaela School is doing, mm. I don't know if that's going to set a precedent, but that is about you know, Muslim children who want to be able to pray and the school saying that they don't want to give them a prayer room because it's divisive. Would that have been, and if this court case does say, actually, if a school says it's secular, it's secular, and so your, your right to pray as a Muslim, you don't have that right at school, would that make teachers' lives very difficult? It could make it. Putting it on the teachers is tricky. I mean, I had a brief period doing supply at a predominantly Muslim or girls' school in uh, Dunstable, and they did have a separation. So there were girls that would wear headscarves and have full face coverage that would take them off at the school gates because the school had a rule that, you know, you had to be able to see people's faces, and there were certain rules. I don't know... I mean, that was back in 2010. Certainly, you'd imagine, you know, uh, identity politics have moved on a pace since then. It's a lot harder. And, you know, teachers and par uh, teachers are up against WhatsApp groups that can mobilise so quickly. And just, yeah. uh, the Barclay School is 80% Muslim and Michaela School is 50% Muslim. So that shows you, if those teachers don't understand those cultures, that's going to be very difficult for them.